What's inside three old game controllers? Is there anything worth salvaging? And could we reuse any of them to make a new controller? Let's find out. It seems like every maker wants to hack and mod an old game controller so it can control something else. A robot, an RC car, their home theater system, or maybe to give access to differently able users. But I see a lot of those makers give up when their controller isn't like the one used in their favorite tutorial, or it turns out that decoding the board, reverse engineering it, is a lot more complex than the tutorial indicated. So I'm going to tear down these three controllers to see how they're different and what parts can be reused. It's just the first step, but should help folks not to freak out if their controller is a little different than what they expected. Let's start with the simplest and oldest. It's got a four button pad and a fake four way joystick pad. The phone cradle detaches from the controller. Inside, we see that each button is a hard shell with squishy elastomer pads attached, and the four way toggle has the elastomeric pad attached to the PCB with a rocker in the shell. Under the elastomeric pads are exposed traces that get bridged by the conductive elastomeric pads to register the button press. There's a battery holder for three cells uh, for a total of 4.5 volts. The PCB is a one-sided design. It has mounting holes drilled into it, and all the components and circuit traces are on one side, so it's easier to understand and should make it simpler to reuse. We can see the path of the circuit from each button pad with some resistors and maybe capacitors on each. There's also an exposed test pad for each button, and the ground connection is well labeled. It's the same for the other side, but uh-oh, we see a lot of other components, including an IC. I think this part is too complicated for me to hack. But because we have test pads, we can still grab a signal from each button. We get a complete circuit from ground to the entry half of the button pad, but no signal from ground to the other side of the button pad and we get a good signal from the button pad to the test pad. So in theory, we could solder wires from the ground to each of the test pads and read the signals whenever the elastomeric pad bridges the two sides of a button pad. If we also cut the traces before the signal gets to that cluster of other components, then we can probably get eight reliable on-off digital signals. That's simple enough to do. It gives us eight digital inputs, and most small microcontrollers can handle that. We might be able to reuse this board. But what if we need more than eight on-off buttons? This small gamepad has that, plus two more digital buttons, plus a pair of two-axis analog joysticks, and two more pairs of digital buttons on the front of the case. That's a lot of controls. The shell on this controller is more complex than the first one. The rubbery part of the grips are separate pieces. The covers of the upper set of front panel buttons stay attached to the shell. Each pair of front panel button pads is on a separate mini PCB with elastomeric caps. These should be easy to salvage. One set of the top panel buttons have the squishy pads attached to the buttons. There are also a pair of buttons that activate a set of four foil tint um, type buttons on the PCB. Right away, we can see that this PC is a lot more complex. Luckily, the two joysticks are on a separate board. Both the joystick daughter board and the front panel buttons have long wiring harnesses. So we can scavenge these with no problem. Yeah, I don't think I'll be able to hack this board, so I'll just salvage what I can and toss the PCB. So let's start cutting. Boom! That's four digital buttons and four analog inputs, plus an on-off switch between the joysticks that I kind of missed. That's a lot of controls, but the PCB, I am bat board, is a lost cause for me. I'm thinking, trace the shape of the board onto some perf board and add some clicky switches. The spacing of the original buttons seems to match the standard pitch, and I have a large selection of different button types, sizes, and heights. I might not be able to get the exact same feel as the original controller, but I could probably duplicate the basic functionality. However, if I discard the original board, that means that I will have to use a microcontroller to give it some brains and communication skills. 
Luckily, I have some great boards that work with Bluetooth and HID protocols, so I could probably make a decent generic controller from these parts. So this one's a little more complicated than the first one, but, you know, it's still doable. This controller is full-sized. It fits my hands better than the other two, and it has almost the same controls as the previous model. It's got slightly different center controls and a larger paddle-shaped lower button on the front panel, but very similar. The case is a simple two-piece shell, and in this controller, all four of the front buttons are separate. One pair are in an enclosed case. It sits in a slot. And the other front buttons are on separate mini boards. More wires to deal with, but the same functions as the last one. The joysticks are also on a separate daughter board. The top buttons and four-way rocker use separate hard shell covers. The three center buttons are squishy elastomerics with one hard cover added for tactile feedback. Removing the elastomeric covers reveal the standard gap circuit trace. And this PCB also has test pads for each button pad. This is a really high quality board with nice helpful labeling. But look at all those components scattered around both sides of the board. This is a two-sided board. If you're brave and smart, you could isolate and reuse all the pads. Maybe. For my personal use, I'm just going to scavenge the parts I know how to hack and fit in a new microcontroller. If you are more ambitious, you could hack the main board. Or you could reposition and rewire all the controls for better access while keeping the main board. Either way, now you realize after seeing all three of these that every controller model is different, but has some things in common. Stay tuned for more videos as I rebuild these controllers for different uses. Get more details about this and other projects on my blog or Facebook page. See the links in the description below, and hit the YouTube subscribe button to get all the latest projects. Thanks for watching. Go make something fun.